determine what they had done. The panicked expression she found there told her everything she needed to know. Miles and Kate Boyer lived in Springfield, Missouri, and had three children, James, Camille, and Lawson. Kate decided that she needed a vacation from the full-time job of raising three kids, but she was hesitant about leaving them alone with their father for an entire weekend. When she voiced her concerns to her husband, Miles, she saw a glint in his eye that she couldn't quite explain. Was he happy that she was leaving? And could he cope without her? Miles watched his wife roll down the drive and away to her destination and the mischievous glint in his eye only intensified as he and the kids waved goodbye. He tossed the to-do list Kate had left him onto the counter. Finally, she was gone and he had absolute freedom, and he intended to enjoy every second of it. But first, he needed to get a few supplies. Miles loaded the children into the SUV. The first stop was the local Walmart. Lawson looked dumbfounded as his father threw item after item into the cart, happily whistling all the while. Looking from the quickly filling trolley to his dad, and then back again, he started to ask a question. But all he got in reply was a wry smile and a shushing finger on his lips. Lawson glanced at his older sister, Camille, but she didn't seem to notice their dad's strange behavior. She walked alongside the shopping cart, lost deep in thought. What did his dad need all this strange stuff for? And why was he being so secretive? Maybe his brother, James, would have the answer. But James was in a world of his own, dashing to and fro through the aisles, giddy with excitement as he eyed the colorful boxes stacked ceiling high. Lawson looked on with a worried expression on his face. He knew from his many shopping excursions with their mom that James' behavior was about to escalate beyond control. Their dad continued to walk like a man on a mission, avoiding all the toy and food aisles with a determined sense of purpose. He had come this far, he just hoped he had the strength to follow through with his daring plan. All the while he wondered, would he get away with it? So far, so good, Miles thought. He had almost completed his secret shopping list. And the children had been angels, so far. Kate must have been exaggerating, he thought, smiling. Any questions they had he would wave away. It was important that his intentions were kept secret. He tossed another hammer into the cart, and that's when all hell broke loose. And there it was. James started to wail uncontrollably and Miles felt his heart sink. The fabled public meltdown he had done his best to avoid was finally upon him. Boredom and blood sugar had taken a toll on James. And it was everything Kate had described, and more. Miles rushed over to his son and tried to quiet him down. Shoppers walked past and tut-tut disapprovingly and he felt a flush bloom on his face. He'd have to resort to dirty tricks to get eight-year-old James to comply, and with a flash, he retrieved something from his pocket. How about a snack? Miles asked, hopefully. He expertly pulled the wrapper off one of the Twinkies he had loaded into his pockets before they had left. James nodded agreeably as he reached for it, tears forgotten, at least for the time being. Miles sighed. Crisis averted. Now, it was time to get back to the task at hand. He proceeded to the checkout line with his furtive load and brood of three in tow. But had the unwitting father bitten off more than he could chew? As any mother would know, leaving the kids and hubby at home for the weekend could have disastrous consequences. Kate was fully prepared to have to clean more than a few messes when she returned from her trip, but she prayed that the house would look the same as when she left it, more or less. If she could see just what Miles was doing in her absence, she may have rethought her weekend trip. You see, Miles had a grand idea as he diligently got to work on the master bedroom. He dismantled all the furniture that Kate had so carefully picked out and moved it away. Then, he started to tear up the carpet. The children watched in awe as sheets of the concrete floor began to expose themselves. What was he doing? Miles was growing worried now, but it was too late to change his mind. So with a reckless tenacity, he continued on with the plan. Foolhardy as that plan may have been, he was determined. Any minute now, Kate could walk through the door. What would she think about what he had done to their bedroom? Miles removed the old brown carpet and began to paint the walls. He worked late into the night, only stopping to make sure the kids had eaten and were bathed before putting them to bed. Then, he hauled in an enormous load of timber. He knew he had to lay it down just right. When the paint on the walls had dried, he set about laying the new floor. Then, he polished the beautiful wood until it gleamed. The next morning, Lawson, James, and Camille were beside themselves with the result. 
With excited yells, they exclaimed that the room now looked like a dance studio. With no furniture to get in the way, they took turns spinning on their toes and pirouetting on the smooth floorboards. Next, Miles began to return the pieces of furniture back to their right places, but not without making a few modifications of his own. He hammered, glued, and cut an enormous rectangular slat of wood before covering it with a piece of material he had carefully picked out. He attached it to the wall and constructed a new headboard for the outdated wooden sleigh-shaped bed. Finally, he was ready to focus on the finer details of the master bedroom. He didn't want a single item to be out of place for the big reveal. Miles stood back and admired his handiwork. But the most important judge was still to come, his wife. But would she appreciate what he had done to the bedroom while she was away? Late on Sunday afternoon, he heard her pulling into the drive and could barely contain his excitement. Dashing to the front door, he lined the children up to greet her. Kate's sixth sense kicked in the minute she saw her family waiting to greet her. Miles had a look on his face that she couldn't quite read, but she knew something was up when he lead her upstairs to the bedroom. Kate stood in the doorway, dumbstruck. When she had left she had thought that her husband could keep the house in one piece, but now she had come home to this. Miles had done the impossible. Kate squealed and threw her hands to her face. The camera recorded every emotion as it showed, from bewilderment to awe, and then to happy tears. The bedroom had been completely transformed. And it looked absolutely stunning. Gone was the outdated and stained carpet, replaced with new hardwood floors. The walls were a freshly painted shade of cream and gave off a new warmth that made Kate exhale with delight. What the heck? She asked in amazement. The complete bedroom makeover had been a long-time dream of Kate's. The Boyers had bought a beautiful old farmhouse with all of their savings, but because the house had originally been built in 1891, there was a lot of work that needed to be done. Unable to afford a contractor, Miles resolved to renovate the old house himself. But with full-time jobs and children to look after, Miles and Kate's bedroom renovation found itself on the bottom of the list. So when Kate went away for the weekend, Miles saw his chance to pull off the biggest surprise for Kate yet. And what could be a better gift for his wife than a brand new bedroom? Miles had put blood, sweat, and tears into the renovation, as well as his heart. Her reaction when she returned home made it worth all the hard work, he said in an interview. By the end of the weekend, Miles had replaced the old and wrinkled carpet, laid down a beautiful new floor, replaced the curtains, repainted the entire room, replaced the wall sockets, and built a trendy new headboard from scratch. Not only did he have a complete remodel to contend with, but he also had three children to look after, what an amazing feat. Miles' entire remodel can be watched on a time-lapse video he uploaded to Rumble, and it's been viewed over a million times. People can't get enough of Kate's husband's heartwarming surprise for his wife. And Kate's expression in the video says it all, she is thrilled with her newly revamped bedroom, it was certainly a move that bus moment. But this is not the first time a parent has come home to a house they don't recognize. She knew something was up the minute she pulled up to the house with her husband. The signs were everywhere, and when she got out the car and saw them standing around nervously, it was all over their faces. Her mothering instinct was screaming at her as she scrutinized her daughter's eyes, trying to determine what they had done. The panicked expression she found there told her everything she needed to know. Chip and Karen lived on the idyllic holiday shores of North Myrtle Beach, South Carolina. They had four daughters, Heather, Holly, Alice, and Haley. Chip and Karen decided that they needed a vacation from the full-time job of raising four daughters, but Karen was hesitant about leaving them alone in the house for an entire week. She knew teenagers, and she knew what impulsive and wild decisions they sometimes make. And her instincts proved to be 100% accurate. Holly and her sisters watched their parents roll away to their holiday destination with glee. Finally, they had gotten rid of their parents, and they would be gone for the whole week. They had absolute freedom, and they intended to enjoy every second of it. Holly had come up with a wild idea now that they had the house to themselves. When Holly's sisters had heard her mischievous plans for the weekend they were awestruck. No teenager they knew had ever done something like this. It was a wild and ambitious endeavor, and it was almost unthinkable even to attempt it. But that is why, in the end, the willful girls knew they absolutely had to do it. There remained one question, though. How would they get away with it? The answer to the question was unclear. The girls didn't know if they could pull off such a momentous stunt without their parents finding out, but they were going to risk it anyway, so they naturally called on a boy for help. 
He had hosted his fair share of house parties, but when he heard what they intended to do he was filled with anxiety. This would be no easy task. This was more than a simple fritboy party. With the help of some muscle, Holly and her sisters woke early the next day and immediately got to work. They first removed the furniture and then started to pull up the carpeting. Then they unceremoniously tossed the lot out the window. If Karen and Chip decided to come home early for whatever reason, the girls knew there would be hell to pay. The girls had prepared for their devious plan tirelessly for the first two days. By now, the kitchen was in an absolute state. Dirty dishes piled up precariously in the sink, objects cluttered the surface, and there was grime everywhere. But the kitchen hadn't even begun to take a beating. It would be unrecognizable to unwitting Chip and Karen once the girls were through. The girls were growing worried now, but it was too late to change their minds. So with a reckless tenacity, they continued on with the plan. They had removed all the furniture in the house and it was sitting out on the front lawn, where it had been abandoned. They worked with a desperation only a teen with impending punishment would know. Any minute now, they knew that parental discipline could come raining down on them. Karen and Chip stood, dumbstruck in the doorway. When they had embarked on their relaxing holiday they had thought that the girls could keep the house in one piece, but now they had come home to this. The unimaginable sight that greeted them was like a scene they could have never even have dreamed up. They were breathless as they passed their nervous daughters and entered the house. The girls had done the impossible. Karen and Chip continued to inspect the house that they loved so dearly. They went from room to room, all while one of their daughters recorded their reaction. The house had been completely transformed. The Schoonover sisters had pulled off the biggest DIY project that Chip and Karen had ever seen. The complete home makeover was meant to be a Christmas surprise to the Schooner parents from their children. They had collected over a decade's worth of clutter, and the house had been in desperate need of some TLC, and the girls seized the opportunity when they had left for their December vacation. They had put all their blood, sweat, and tears into the renovation, as well as their hearts. The hardwood floor had been refinished, the carpets were replaced, and every wall had been painted. They had even replaced the linens in the bedrooms to complete the makeover, and every surface gleamed. They had given the house so much love and attention that it looked brand new. The work that the girls had put in with their own hands was apparent in every room. Karen walked around the unrecognizable house in a daze, with exclamations of, how, and, why, as she hid her bewildered face behind her hands. Chip was frozen, standing there like a man in a trance. He had been thunderstruck as to how the girls had managed to pull off such a momentous feat, unable to say a single word. The Schooner sisters had, luckily, recorded the entire transformation of the house from beginning to end, and posted the video on YouTube. The video has since gotten over a whopping 2 million views, and it's easy to see why, the sisters worked tirelessly for an entire week on the project, yielding amazing results. The heartwarming reveal is sure to have everyone moved to tears by the selflessness of the girls who wanted to make their parents' dreams come true. The schooners are thrilled with their daughters' efforts, and the house has increased in value because of their hard work. The daughters wanted to do something enormous for their parents to spoil them for Christmas, and with a lot of hard work, they did it. The most rewarding part was how Karen was reduced to tears of gratitude. It certainly was a move-that-bus moment.